welcome all of you all, all of us, to our annual Thanksgiving Eve service. We're so glad to see so many of you here tonight. It's definitely a full house, and that's a great thing. And we're going to start off our first item of business is to sing one of our old Thanksgiving hymns, We Gather Together. So let's all stand and sing, and I believe the words are going to be up here on the screen behind me and above you all. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is the largest attendance since I have been pastor here at Union uh, that we have had at the joint Thanksgiving service. And uh, I thank you for coming. Uh, I know that God is going to bless us as we share together tonight with our uh, good friends from Philbert Presbyterian. And Brother Wallace, we're grateful that you and your people have come to join us tonight. Uh, I have learned to love and appreciate this man of God, dear, dear friend, and I appreciate him, and and I uh, appreciate all of you from uh, Philbert coming to share with us this evening uh, in this service. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements. <clears throat> uh, Bud Penrod passed away, that's Sandra's husband, and the family will receive on Friday evening at Bratton from 5 to 7, and the service will be here at uh, Union at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, and I would remind our ladies that we feed the family following the service, so if you're willing to help with that, if you haven't been contacted, please see uh, Miss Debbie Alt. And then also, uh, Sunday will be the last opportunity uh, to give to or to bring your shoe boxes. And uh, we've had a wonderful response. Uh, we've got, I think, a little over 260. And last year we had 280. And so if you've not uh, yet uh, filled a box or two, there's some, there's some empty ones in the vestibule or downstairs. You can get them and uh, bring a box on Sunday, and I'm confident we can, we can pass the 300 mark. Uh, also, uh, we have some Christmas signs. Uh, the world has just forgotten what Christmas is all about. And uh, so we have these signs, and if any of you from Philbrook would like one, uh, we're running a special on this Wednesday night. They're $5 a piece, or two for 15 whichever you, would, uh, <laughs> whichever you would prefer. And they were down front somewhere, but I don't know what this is. They're here somewhere, and we'll trust you. Just drop $5 there and pick one up, or there's some in the vestibule. And we're glad to have some very special people here tonight, besides our dear friends from Philbrook. Uh, we have the balls all the way from the Fiji Islands. Thank you for being here. Uh, she is a, a granddaughter of Mr. Bill Wood, and they're serving as missionaries in the Fiji Islands. 
uh, their home on furlough, and they were here with us a few Sundays ago and blessed our people immensely. And if you haven't met them or spoken with them, uh, I encourage you to do that when we have fellowship time in the fellowship hall after the service. Brother Dave Hall is going to come and lead us in our opening prayer, and then Ben Maynard is going to come and lead us in our responsive reading. Let's pray and ask the Lord to meet with us. Our God and our Father, we, we thank you that in Jesus Christ all of your promises are yea and amen, and that not one good promise that you have made to us has failed to come to pass, that you have kept them all in Christ and for the good of your people. We have much for which we are thankful, and we praise you that you are so good to us, not only making us in your own image, but calling us to know you, to have fellowship and communion with you through Jesus Christ, your Son, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. And so we thank you for calling us your own, for gathering us together in this place tonight as the body of Christ, the church gathered under the lordship of King Jesus and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you, the living God, would meet with us, and that as we express thanks, that we, we don't just express thanks to be heard by one another, we express thanksgiving to you, the living God, who made us and who gives us every good gift. And so we pray that you'd be in this place tonight, that you'd come and make your presence known among us, and that you would usher us into your glorious presence, that by faith we might see and behold your glory and be changed by it. We pray this humbly and yet with great confidence because of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. We praise your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For to you, Lord, have made me glad to do your work. I will cry out in the works of your hands. O Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man is not great, nor is a fool when he stands there. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. And you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Okay, we're going to continue on with another hymn, and uh, the next one is, Now Thank We All Our God. So let's all stand and sing together, Now Thank We All Our God.
seated. Okay. All right. We come to a, a very important part of the service. I think it's one that everybody looks forward to. Uh, when we give you an opportunity not to preach, <laughs> uh, I will do that later, but to give testimony, and uh, I will uh, allow the folks at Union uh, to speak, and then Brother Wallace is going to come, and if you remember to Filbert, then you just share a brief word of thanksgiving, what you may be especially thankful for this year. Let's see if this is working. Is that working? Is it working? It's working now. It's turned on. Now. Still not all right. Okay. He's turned up a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Now. That's better. All right. Who wants to be first? I want to pray for my dad. Pray for your dad, okay? I would like to thank God because I have everything I've ever wanted. Amen. All right. Who's next? Who's next? All the way to the back, okay? I'm thankful uh, Christy had breast cancer and she is cancer free. Also, little Drake, who we have prayed for over and over for the past eight years, he is no longer having seizures uh, and has a long way to go. And her sister-in-law, Kathy, uh, she's had uh, two cancer uh, scares, and right now she is doing good. Amen. Thank God for his healing power. All right, who's next? Well, we've had a difficult year. Uh, Ray had open heart surgery in March, but and then developed an infection and one thing after another. But I'm just so thankful that through it all, God has been with us all the way. Um, and thankful for um, the doctors, wonderful doctors that we had, but then mostly for his healing power. I'm thankful for um, our church here and what how they've stood behind us and prayed for us and been with us for Ben for stepping in for Ray for you for being so gracious to even allow him to sit down and preach when he couldn't stand up and we just can't say thank you enough for all God has done through for us through you and we're thankful for our friends that um, at Philbert Presbyterian we know that you were praying for us too and for Pastor Wallace has been there for us and uh, I can look to him as my pastor's time. We appreciate you all. Y'all know that she said Wallace was her pastor. <laughs> uh, he's a, he's, he was, I cannot say enough for Wallace Tinsley. He was at the hospital so many times, came to our home, and we thank God for him. We really do. Any, who else? Thank God for, I'm very thankful because this year our family's been through a lot with the, my papa and my mom and everything. And um, I, I know if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't, my mind would be gone. <laughs> so he's, he's seen us through it and gave us courage. And especially my church family's been there and it's been a blessing. And I, I can't thank God enough for the love and care of my church. Thank you. All right, I think Miss Debbie over here, well, did you? All right. I just want to thank everybody for their prayers. And three weeks ago that I was in the hospital and they didn't know if I was going to make it or not. And I'm alive. By the grace of God, Amen. I'm alive. Amen. And I want to thank God for all of my family and all of my church family. I couldn't have made it without y'all. Thank you, Miss Debbie. All right. Who's next? All right. I'm 
just um, really thankful to be home with my family again and with my cousins. And, I mean, God has just blessed us so much to be able to be missionaries in Fiji, but also to, to be able to come back and be with my family again. Amen. All right, who's next? Anybody just pray to the Lord just all yeah. Yeah. All those children I brought in you a while ago, <laughs> all them <laughs> children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. How many, Mr. Bill? Uh, I couldn't count them. They didn't keep them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do we need to take up an offering to help you feed them or not? No, right, everything's all right. Everything's okay. <laughs> we have those uh, t uh, two young ladies from Bob Jones that were with, with them in Fiji. Good. They're with us they're, they're students at Bob Jones, hey, hey, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You you tell about that. Uh, you tell. Okay. You you tell about it. Okay. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Teresa, and Teresa is from Fiji. Um, she's a Bob Jones. Hi, I'm Teresa, and um, the balls. Uh, minister to my church back home in Fiji, and <laughs> um, Bula, that's hello. <laughs> God, God's. Um, it's been my dream to come to Bob Jones, um, Greenville, uh, but I never thought that I would be able to ever come here because I'm from such a tiny island. I mean, you can't even see Fiji on the map, and. Um, I prayed about it for a long time, but when I became a teenager, I gave up on it, and I said, what's the use? God's not answering it, because it's been so long, and then God kind of used the balls um, to uh, remind me to start praying about it again, and I did, and one, three, man, three months before, um, last year, three months before, I was praying about it, and three months later, I was in Greenville, in Bob Jones, and God has just answered prayers like amazing. He's knocked me off my feet and how he has answered so much. And it was a childhood dream. And I never thought it would come true, but um, God is faithful to give you um, the desires of your heart if you commit everything to him. Amen. I did get those boxes when I was younger, too. So just thank you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Nathan told us Sunday that he received a box uh, in the Fiji Islands. Uh, and I went to Trinidad back last February, and I can tell you it works. If I could just describe the faces of those boys and girls that we handed those boxes to, uh, all of you would run home and you'd grab a box and run home and fill up two or three more because they do bless the children around the world things that they would never receive and uh, they receive the gospel in that box it's not just goodies they receive the gospel in that box in their own language you know all right who's next what you gonna thank god for i was gonna pray for my dog his name's um buddy um, Bella. That's why I love to hear children pray because they pray for things we don't even think about. We take for granted. You know. All right? Who's next? All right. I just wanted to say I'm thankful for my church family, but I'm also thankful for my husband. Um, I see God in him, and, and I just every day when I see him spending his time with God, I just thank the Lord for his, his um, example of a godly husband. And Amen. to tell you, we have ten kids, and the family has not been together like this in almost ten years. Amen. So we are so excited um, if you come by, stop by the house and get you something to eat and visit. But I'm just thanking the Lord that we're all together. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else, real quickly, before I hand the 
to <laughs> I come from a big family, you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'd just like to thank God for Ray Long and Mary Long. And if you look around this church, you can see what God's done through Ray Long in this church. I've been coming here 67 years, and I have seen this church grow more. And it just the warmth in this church now, it is unbelievable. So I would like to say thank you, God, for Ray Long. Ray, all I can do is say the same thing. <laughs> I agree completely about the, what the Lord has done here, what the Lord does through y'all. Uh, we are so thankful for the prayers he's answered for you and Mary over the last two years especially, um, and for the clarity of the gospel. And the people in the county already know who you are. I mean, they, uh, everybody in the legal system around here uh, knows who you are and what you stand for and then you preach the gospel and I praise the Lord my my brother's a pastor and he uh, uh, he blew out his Achilles tendon a number of years ago and he had to preach for several months sitting down and I, I praise the Lord the, the word I think is probably at least as strong if you're in that situation where you have to sit down <laughs> as well as it is when you stand up so I praise the Lord for that um Psalm 75 uh, talks about giving thanks, and it, it, it says the name of the Lord is near, and therefore I'll give him praise. If you can remember that, because how many psalms do we have in the Bible? 150, 150. So divide that by two, and you, you get to the 75, 75th psalm. It isn't all about thanksgiving, but it starts that way and it ends that way. Amen. And it, the, when it says the name of the Lord is near, He's here. Thanksgiving is really giving thanks, you know, to him. But what we're doing here, what y'all are doing, what we're doing here tonight is really bearing testimony. What a wonderful testimony it is. Okay. Who would, okay, so you did Union Baptist, so I'm mainly doing Filbert, is that yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, my sister almost passed away delivering her second son. Uh, thankful for that. And our boy is going to be born in three weeks, and it's been healthy. So that end up, my twin brother made it back from Afghanistan. Amen. And Amen. I'm actually going to call him and put him on speakerphone because he wanted to thank you all for everything that you've done here. Thank you. We, we praise the Lord. There's several major prayer requests, and we, we when when a, a child is in the womb, we spent we. I know it's it's difficult to make the decision to put it in the prayer guide and to tell everybody in the community. There are a lot of difficulties with with that whole process of how you spread the word about expecting a baby. But as soon as we know, we just something happens every day in that development, and it's something to pray about important things to pray about every day and then the delivery itself when Rebecca almost lost her life in delivering her and she's fine and the baby's fine amen All right, praise the Lord for that amen. someone else okay I know I may just be a kid but I know that through God we can do everything we want we can do anything so that's how I got in life this far I have went through the ups and downs of losing my family. I have gone through the ups and downs of losing the people I love. But I know through God I can do everything I need. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Oh, okay. Get back over here. I'll come back to you, John. Okay. All right. You're on. All right. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. All right. Well, I uh, hope everybody is doing well back there. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Josh. I'm a uh, base brother and Ann and Eddie's son. And uh, that member for, for pretty much my whole adult life. Uh, okay. No. And I got back from Afghanistan at the end of January. And some of us had a great, great support system. I uh, got letters, boxes, and more prayers than I could, I could count. Um, every guy that I left with, <clears throat> they all, we all came back. And uh, Amen. I know that them and a lot of you guys over at Union had a lot to do with that. And I uh, wanted to say I'm thankful for that. And also that my wife and I are expecting our first child, and everything is going very well there. Amen. So that, uh, that's what I'm thankful for. And I love you guys, and I'll see you all around Christmas. I may not have the statistic right, and maybe, maybe wait, or Eddie, y'all could uh, uh, correct me, but I think when they made that last uh, trip back out, going through those dry riverbed places, that they were like the 167th group that had taken that route, and the first 166 had been hit by an, by an IED, and their group was not hit. You know, uh, bullets, mortars... Uh, no, nothing hit him. Okay, Mr. Hunter. Thank you. My wife next to me here is 89 years old and had pneumonia about six weeks ago. We took her to the emergency room in Rock Hill and the doctor treated her and said, you can stay around here for a while if you want to, but you may catch something else, so go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. So we took her home, and she's well. The last trip was it. All the pneumonia is clear. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody else? Sorry. I'm, thank you. I'm thankful for everybody in my family just so I could just spend time with everybody, my friends, my family. I'm just really thankful that I got to spend time with my cousins and all that. I'm just very thankful for everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Somebody else? Um, I'm just thankful for uh, my great-grandpa, Papa Bill, and uh, he's put up with me since Saturday, and uh, I've learned a lot from him. <laughs> he's a great example to me. I'm just thankful for him. Praise the Lord for patience, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's mainly joy, mainly joy that Bill's experiencing. Okay. I'm thankful for my grandma. She does a lot, and she really deserves it. Thank you. I'm uh, Eddie Parks with a father that's still here in Josh. But, uh, I just, okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> My favorite friends are awful quiet to say, and I think Wallace might ought to call them some of them, just make them get up. But. When I come into church, this man come around the front of the church and had young ones all over him. It was Mr. Bell. I got tickled watching them go up the steps. They were hurting him. <laughs> but uh, thanks so much to the Union Baptist for inviting us over every year. It means so much to my family and our church family. It's just great to have fellowship with you and know you all pray for us. And we pray for you all and Mr. Long. So thank you again. Okay. Okay, someone else? Okay. I 
I'm very thankful for God's faithfulness to us. Um, as most of you know, Mama went to be with the Lord in September. And we're just very, very thankful for the, the strength that he gives. He promises he will not leave you or forsake you, and he doesn't. We're thankful for the support of our Filbert family, for their um, love and understanding over the last four years, and many, many, many prayers and food and words of encouragement and just so much along those lines. I'm very thankful for Wallace's just amazing support and care for Mom and Daddy over those four years. And we are very thankful for... Um, the clear testimony in Mama's life, any of you who knew her know that even with her Alzheimer's, the love of the Lord still was so clear. And it was just a very beautiful thing to, she might not know her grandchildren or some of her children, but she still could talk to the Lord. And that was a, just a beautiful testimony to his work in her life. And I'm thankful for the privilege of being able to, to have witnessed that. Thank you, Ruth. Amen. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say this week has been um, kind of special um, to me and my thoughts about Thanksgiving because over the past several years at Thanksgiving time, our family has gone through some... Um, surgeries with daddy's hip surgery two years ago and complications and um, a very difficult year in recovering and last year my um, grandmother who's 95 had a pacemaker placed in and I had spent Tuesday night in the hospital with her and so today you know just what I did last year being spending time with her um, and she's still with us today and um, she's such a testimony to um, the Lord and um, his grace in her life and through all of her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Um, but I also want to say, Wallace and Dave, that we do appreciate all that y'all do at Philbert um, for us as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylin. Yes. I'm thankful for my mama and papa and my family. Very good. Thank you. Somebody else? Okay, that'll be about it unless Eddie's going to call on somebody. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> uh, I am truly blessed. I just, I have so much to be thankful for. Um, in my classroom, I have my students list one thing they're thankful for every day and for the whole month of November. So Tuesday, we finished off the whole month that we had each child had 30 things at least they were thankful for. Um, so I'm, I'm just thankful. And I tell them that we're all richly blessed and we have much to be thankful for. And I hope that they see that, that you know, they can think about it and realize they do have a lot to be thankful for. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sherry. I'm thankful for food. Thankful for food. Is that a hint? <laughs> I'm thankful that uh, for my family, and I'm thankful that uh, that we're missionaries in Fiji. I'm thankful that the ministry in Fiji is going well, and yeah. <laughs> what a, what a joy it is to have so many young people share Thanksgiving. To have a heart of Thanksgiving from the time they're children. Okay, anyone else? I just want to say I'm thankful for my family, but I'm also thankful for every man and woman that goes out in our community, wears this badge to protect and serve, to do a job that not a lot of people want to do. So we've all seen what's going on on the other side of the country. So just today and tomorrow, just keep those guys in your prayers.
Fathers asked me if I would pray for uh, our members of the law enforcement community. Uh, I will do that now. I was going to make a comment about them. Uh, we regularly recognize our military here at Union. Uh, and uh, I'm also appreciative for officers like Officer Lauder. I have a special place in my heart for for police officers having had a son served for many years on the highway patrol. And then I work with these guys on a regular basis. And uh, I thank God for them. And I think what has happened this past week in our country now, now uh, Wallace didn't know, but he's opened up a real place in my heart. Uh, I'm just liable to preach for about 30 minutes about this. <laughs> because uh, what has happened in our country this past week has shown the great disregard that some people have for law and order. And I, I like also Ladder, thank God for those men like him. And I've known him a number of years, and I can testify to his Christian character as I could to many of the officers. And uh, our guys do need your prayers on a regular basis that God would continue to keep them safe because the environment out there, as he would tell you, is getting more violent day by day. So let's pray. Father, we... We do just uh, pause this evening to thank you for those men and women like the young man who, who spoke to us a few moments ago, and we thank you for your protection upon him as he, as he defended his country in Afghanistan, and you have brought him safely back to, back to this country, and for all of those who, who wear the uniform of, of our, our great country. But Lord, we also thank you for the men and women who get up every morning and put on a uniform and, uh, Father, when they leave out of their home and they kiss their wife and they hug their children, uh, they do not know uh, what that day holds for them. And they do not know whether or not they're going to return home safely. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just build a, build a hedge of protection about, uh, about these young men like Officer Lighter and so many others uh, in our county and in our state and around our nation. And, Father, I pray that uh, out of what's happened in our country this past week, I pray that godly men and women, men and women who love this country, who respect law and order, I pray, Father, that we would begin to rise to our feet and demand and demand of our government that you give greater authority to those who wear the badge to protect us from the kind of people who tried to destroy our country in these past days. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you, Ray. Greg, ready? You know, as we, uh, in just a minute, we're going to sing our next song and then have our uh, special offering for release time. But before we do that, I've got a song here that I want to sing. As we think about... Uh, what we're thankful for and praising God and, and being so very thankful for all the blessings that we have. And, and many of y'all or some of you all mentioned how you're grateful and thankful for just some of the basics of life. And, you know, as, as we think about God, the creator of the universe and the, the creator and maker of all things, you know, even all of his, as this song talks about, all of his works offer praises and are, and are symbolic of everything that God has done. And, and creation itself praises God and sings hallelujahs to God uh, just to worship and praise him for all of the things that he's done. And that's what this song talks about a little bit. Uh, now, whatever way or however way, that we speak or the language that we use, all of us, and even God's creation itself lifts, lifts up its praises to him.
A purple sky to close the day. I wade the surf where dolphins play. The taste of salt, the dance of waves. And my soul wells up with alleluias. A lightning flash, my pounding heart. A breaching well, a shooting star. Give testimony that you are. And my soul wells up with alleluias. Oh, praise him all his mighty works. There is no language where you can't be heard. Your song goes out to all the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O cratered moon and sparrow's wings, O thunder's boom and Saturn's rings, Unveil our Father as you sing, and my soul wells up with alleluias. Oh, praise him all his mighty works. There is no language where you can't be heard. Your song goes out to all the earth. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The pulse of life within my wrist, a fallen snow, a rising mist. There is no higher praise than this, and my soul wells up, oh, my soul wells up. Yes, my soul wells up with alleluias. Oh, praise him all his mighty works. There is no language where you can't be heard. Your song goes out to all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. study and our song is 793 if you're using a hymnal for the beauty of the earth so let's all stand and sing together
No. Oh. No, it's ushers, ushers. Um, the, the, the gift for this evening is for, for released time Bible education. What that means is that during the school day in public schools, it is legal, and it's gone all the way up to the Supreme Court and back down, it is legal to take the young people, take students off school grounds and teach them the Bible. And when, when you get them into the location, if it's Sharon Baptist or if it's Trinity Methodist, whatever it is, when you're there, you teach the same thing you would teach in vacation Bible school, the same thing you teach in Sunday school, no restrictions. It's just straight Bible. And what we're doing here tonight with Presbyterians and Baptists and others together uh, is what we're, is what Release Time Bible, Bible Education is doing. It's, it's, it's teaching Jesus, and, and that's what we're agreed on, is teaching Jesus, sharing the gospel of salvation to students. For those who are already Christians, to those who go to church, it is a great boost to them. Uh, and for those that have not heard the gospel, if, if there's no other place for them to get it, they can get it straight there. And so whether you're in the New Testament, even when you're in the, the Old Testament, the plan is for every lesson it, if you're talking about Samuel, if you're talking about Esther, if you're talking about David, or Moses, wh whatever it is, every lesson is to point forward to Jesus. Um, it's a wonderful thing to give to. Uh, RTBE is in Union Baptist budget. It's in Philbert Presbyterian's budget. If, if you want to give by check, simply write it out to Union Baptist. Uh, the, our, the secretary, the, the uh, treasurer for the or RTBE would really appreciate it if we get only one check, uh, you know, put together. If you would do that instead of writing it out to release time, just write it out to Union Baptist Church. Now, Mr. Broom. <laughs>
Lord unto me. It matters not whether he's a Presbyterian preacher or a Baptist preacher. Uh, when he looks down at his watch and it says 8 o'clock. And somebody reminded me, I know not whom, but I wrote it down, thankful for the food. And when I realized there, there is a bountiful table in the basement waiting, and woe be unto the man that stands between folks and the chow line. <laughs> he is in real trouble, I could promise you that. But uh, uh, boy, I tell you, but... Uh, So what should I do, Lord? <laughs> uh, I do have a sermon, and uh, we're taught that we're to have three points in a poem. I didn't have three points to start with, and I didn't have a poem to start with. But I did have some things on my heart, and uh, but. Uh, I'm going to read the scripture, and, uh, and the scripture's a familiar one. It's found in the gospel according to Luke. Would you turn there in chapter 17 of Luke's gospel in verse 11? My wife expressed uh, earlier this evening how grateful we were, and I, I know that that many of you have expressed your gratitude to God, your, your thankfulness. And even those of you who did not do that audibly, I know that in your heart of hearts uh, that uh, there is great reason to give thanks to God. But I do not know really of anyone who is more grateful and more thankful to God tonight than is this preacher who stands before you because... Uh, on March the 7th, I underwent a, as she said, a, a surgery that uh, I never dreamed I would have to go undergo. And Brother John, you spoke well. The most dangerous place in the world is in a hospital. <laughs> it's the greatest place to be, but sometimes it can be dangerous, and that's what happened to me. Uh, I developed a very, very serious infection that only about 10% of the people really come through. And I was one of those 10%. And it's due to praying. And I'm thankful for that. But you know the story. In fact, let me just, uh, let me just tell you the story so that I can do it a little quicker. Jesus is passing through and and uh, as he passes through, there were ten men. No doubt had heard of Jesus. No doubt had heard of his power to heal. And, and we've heard some of those testimonies this evening. And I believe that the Jesus who walked this earth 2,000 years ago and healed is the same Jesus who's walking this earth today and healing people, just like some of you have testified. I have no questions. I have no doubt in my mind. Our God is a miracle-working God. I don't have any questions about that, no doubts about that at all. And so these ten men, as you know, the story approached Jesus, and, and uh, they stand at a distance, as is a custom if you had leprosy, and they ask for Jesus' healing. And Jesus did what he had done so many times and continues to do. Jesus healed those ten men. And then something happened. All ten of those men returned and fell prostrate at the feet of Jesus and offered up to him their thanksgiving. Now some of you ain't too sure about that, are you? <laughs> I see some doing this. I see some, I'm not sure. 
Well, you know the story if you know the Bible. Only one of those ten men returned to give thanks to God. Now let me ask you a quick question tonight. In which group do you fall? Are you that ten percent who returns on a regular basis to give thanks to God? Are you like that ninety percent who rarely if ever give thanks to God? I read something this week somewhere. It said we should not have one day a year of thanksgiving. But rather this day, tomorrow, ought to be designated as grumbler's day. Complainer's day. And then the other 365 days be days of thanksgiving. I like that, don't you? We grumble, we complain a lot. But let me tell you something, folks. We have more than anybody else in this world to lift our hands and voices this evening and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for your blessings. I as Mike, Brother Wallace had mentioned about these two fine missionaries from Fiji, and, and he mentioned something about them giving a testimony of thanksgiving and how it all uh, uh, unfolds in the Fiji Islands. And so I asked Mike about it. Do any of you know what Mike told me? They don't have a day like we have tomorrow of Thanksgiving. The Americans there will get together and they will have a season together of Thanksgiving. But you see, the truth is, as far as I know, there are no other nations in the world where people observe a day of Thanksgiving like we do in America. And you know the reason for that? Nobody else has as much reason to praise God and thank God than we do as Americans. And I wish I had just time this evening just to talk about, just enumerate, just list those blessings that are ours because we are citizens of the greatest nation in all the world. We call it these United States of America. And so I would encourage you tomorrow. When you sit down with your family before you enjoy the turkey, the ham, and the dressing. Y'all want me to list all of those things? (laughs) Before you do all of that, Ask every person, every child, every young person, every adult around that table to just take a moment. And as this dear teacher said, and thank God for teachers, I don't know, who was that? Who, thank God for teachers like this teacher who had those children every day to express thanksgiving for something that they had experienced during the year. I wish to God we had more teachers like these teachers. And so tomorrow I ask those around your table to just take the time to say thank you for this and thank you for that and thank you for the other. One of the things that I often do when I'm in a restaurant, uh, I watch the people who come and go. And I watch people when their food comes. And you know how most of them act? You know how, mo- how many of you ever, how many of you ever, ever seen the farmer, or maybe you've done this. I know Mr. Bill Wood used to have a whole heap of them, I understand. Mr. Bill Wood used to have hogs. Is that right, Mr. Bill? Pretty close. <laughs> if you've ever seen the farmer feed the hogs, you know what, what the hogs do? Man, when he, when he dumps that slop, and I don't think they feed him slop anymore. I'm from the old school. When the farmer dumps that feed, that slop in that trough, you know what those, you know what those hogs do? Thank you, Father, for a good farmer. <laughs> Amen. You ain't done never seen that, and I ain't done never seen that either. But you know what most humans act like in a restaurant? And I watch it all the time. They eat like hawks. They don't even bow their heads long enough to say, Father, thank you for what you're giving to me. And oftentimes, when we leave a restaurant, 
I will walk over and put my hand on some man's shoulder and I will say to him, I want you to know something. You blessed me tonight when you took time to say thank you to the Father of Heaven. We're blessed. And so what are you tonight? One of that 10%? Or are you one of that 90%? And on and on I could go thanking God for all the many things and you could too. Let me tell you something. Far too many people have an ungrateful heart rather than a grateful heart. I read in the Guidepost magazine many years ago that a school teacher who had taught school for many, many years coming to the end of her days, she said, you know, in all of these years, I've only received one letter from a former student thanking me for teaching them. And you know, when I read that, I stopped and thought, I was blessed with great school teachers. I was blessed with great Sunday school teachers. But how many times have I paused to look back in time and say a word of thanks to those teachers who gave so much of themselves for me in so many ways. And I could go on and on, but I see some of you. When's he going to quit? I just, I, I wish I had a lot of time because, because God's been so good to me. God's been so good to you. God's been so good to this country. And I want to say again, so who's supposed to pray, Greg? You or me or Wallace. who's in the bulletin? Wallace, okay. <laughs> just don't pray too long, Wallace. <laughs> but I want to say again, before Wallace comes to lead us in prayer. Let, let me say uh, to our union folks, you allow our guests to go first. The pastor leads the way. <laughs> but you children, please don't run down there and get in line. Uh, you let uh, Brother Wallace lead his flock and let those folks eat and there'll be plenty left. Yeah. You said something real interesting. As close as Eddie can get. <laughs> Eddie's problem is he ran out of fingers and toes. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I thought I thought it was the biggest pride we've had. Let me say one other word. Thank God for our military. But again, when you see young men like Officer Ladder who don't make a great deal of money and they get up every day and they put their uniform on and they put their life on the line, when you see these young men, just say a word, thank you. I appreciate what you do for our community. I appreciate the protection that you provide for us, I could just preach a sermon on that tonight, and I thank God. Uh, uh, I thank God for you, and I thank God for all those guys that put that uniform on every day and protect us. And again, I thank you for coming, and uh, we've had a great time. We're going to have an even greater time. Uh, Wallace, stand and lead us in prayer, if you would, and your folks go and lead us down to the down to the chow line. Okay. stand as we pray. God, you are great and you are good. Jesus, you are our best friend. You are the bread from heaven and you feed us and we want no more. You give us everything. Everything that you give us comes through your hand and we praise you for it. We ask you to bless the food. We ask you to bless the fellowship. You've already blessed the worship and the thanksgiving. Thank you for blessing our families. Uh, we ask your blessings on tomorrow and the rest of our lives. May you receive all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.